Good morning. How are you? Tell me what this is. It's a standard form of a quadratic, right? <clears throat> You're comfortable with that? Okay. So here's what I want to do. Together, I want to complete the square on this. You know all the rules for completing the square, right? Should it be different that there's no numbers? We just have variables and values, right? You okay with that? So if we're completing the square on this, what are we doing first? There's actually two things you can do first, okay? It doesn't matter which one of those two things you do, but you gotta do one of those two things first. Subtract C. Subtract C, that's one of the things that you can do first. Okay, so if I subtract C, then I have AX squared plus BX equals negative C. Then I'll divide by A, okay? Everything on both sides, I'm gonna divide by A. So I would get X squared plus B over AX equals negative C over A. Are you okay so far? Okay. Now I need to complete my square. Okay, I'm gonna come over to the side and do some work real quick, okay? Because I don't like dividing fractions by a number. You, you don't like dividing fractions by a number either, do you? Dividing by two is the same as multiplying by what? One half, right? Think about it, not looking at this. What is 10 divided by two? What's half of 10? Okay, do you, do you see what I'm saying? Dividing by two is the same thing as multiplying by one half. So let's multiply this by one half. What do I get? B over two A. Now let's square that thing. When you square a fraction, you square the numerator, and then you square the denominator. 4a squared? Does that make sense? Okay, so what goes in the blank then? Okay, so b squared over 4a squared. On both sides, right? Okay, so far. You have to tell me the truth, and you have to stop me if you don't understand. Is that fair? Okay, now I have my trinomial, and I have this stuff on the other side. Are you okay with that? What do, what do I go from for my trinomial? So my binomial, right? X, I can either take half of this or the square root of this for this other part, right? Which one do you want to do? Half. Half, okay, so multiply this by one half. What do you get? B over 2A. You okay with that? Okay, now I need to be able to add these two fractions. Are you in agreement on that? In order to add fractions, I need a common denominator. So common denominator between a and 4a squared is just 4a squared, right? But this one needs a 4 and an a so that it's 4a squared. So that means I have to multiply the numerator also by 4a. So I have 4ac in the numerator. Are you okay with that? So what I have is negative 4ac plus b squared over 4a squared. Do you have any questions? Everybody still with me? Okay, so what do I do? Which seat right here? I didn't I didn't square it. I multiplied that by 4a. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, now what's the next step? Square it both sides. So if I square root that side and I square root this side. On this side, what do I get? X plus B over 2A. On this side, um, do you guys mind if I rearrange this a little bit? I don't like to start with a negative. So I'm just going to say the square root of B squared minus 4AC over 4A squared. Oh, see, you, I left a space for you, right? So you would remember that? Plus or minus for sure. Okay, so far? Now, I don't like fractions inside of square roots, and you also don't like fractions inside of square roots, okay? So really what we need to do is the square root of b squared minus 4ac over the square root of 4a squared, okay? So I'm going to leave this as it was because I haven't done anything over there. 
2a equals, I have plus or minus still, this is still b squared minus 4ac, but what is the square root of 4a squared? 2a. And then to solve for x, I just subtract b over 2a, and I get x equals negative b over 2a plus or minus this, oh, that's wrong, the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And since those both have the same denominators, can't I just combine them? Have you ever seen that before? Yeah, you have. You worked with it a lot in Algebra 1. Do you remember what it's called? The quadratic formula. It's the quadratic formula. I wanted you to see where the quadratic formula came from. It's not just some random formula that people came up with and just slapped down on the paper. They took standard form of a quadratic and completed the square to solve for x. That's how come we can use this formula to solve for x because it comes straight from standard form of a quadratic. I think that's pretty cool. It's not just some random formula that I give you and say, okay, we've been using this for years, just keep using it. it we just used completing the square, which we dealt with last time we met, on the standard form to get quadratic formula. I told you last time we met, maybe the two times ago that we met, that I was going to teach you quite a few different ways to solve a quadratic, right? What have we talked about so far? We talked about graphing, like how to solve a quadratic, factoring, square roots, Last time we talked about and today we're going to talk about quadratic formula. Okay. Which one of these is easiest? It depends on the situation, doesn't it? It depends on the situation. Graphing will be easiest if we have really nice, like, nice roots, right? Two and three, negative one and six. That's really nice to do graphing because we can just look at the table to see our proof. Otherwise, we have to do analyze, graph, zero, lower bound, upper bound. Ugh. Okay, gives us the answer, but doesn't really mean a whole lot to us. So then we know it, that's where it crosses the x-axis. That's good to know. Okay. Um, why didn't we choose factoring as the easiest? It doesn't always work, right? Things can't always be factored. Maybe that they might be prime um, factor-wise. We know we can still solve for x, but we can't factor it easily, right? What about square roots? Why didn't we choose that as the easiest? Can't always do it. If there's an x term, it's out, right? Um, completing the square, it gets pretty messy if the leading coefficient is not 1, doesn't it? This looks really messy. It's not. I mean, we understood all the steps. That's why I say it's not. It is messy, isn't it? Um, so when a, when a is not 1, this gets really messy. So what about quadratic formula? Quadratic formula works every time. Well, if it works every time, why didn't I just teach you only quadratic formula? Because it's not always the easiest. That's exactly right. Okay? You know multiple ways now. If I give you a graph, there's no reason for you to try to factor it. Just look at the x-intercepts, right? If I give you a, a quadratic that's super easy to factor, factor it. Very few steps that way. If there's an x squared term but not an x term, take the square root of both sides. Super easy, right? Completing the square, that, that's pretty fun to me. Completing the square is a puzzle. 
Okay, when the leading coefficient's one and I can't factor it, that's probably what I'm going to try. But quadratic formula works every single time. Okay, and this formula you're going to memorize. This is one of those important ones that I'm not going to put on a sideboard for you during the test. You're going to need to know it. So I'm going to teach you a way to learn it. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Now you get to sing it with me. You ready? X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And just for good luck, we're going to do it one more time. But we're going to take it up a couple of steps because I started a little low. You ready? X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Uh, what's it for? It, it doesn't do any good to know a really awesome, cool song if you don't know what it's for. Right? What is it for? To solve a quadratic equation. That's exactly right. Okay? So let's practice using it. Example number one. X squared plus 3X minus 5 equals 0. X squared plus 3X minus 5 equals 0. What do we need to do first? Well, we're not completing the square. We're solving quadratic formula, right? So I need to identify what my A, B, and C are, right? Well, there's A, there's B, and there's C. So A is 1, B is 3, and C is negative 5. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Now all we have to do is simplify, right? X equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9. Here's where you're going to mess up if you're going to mess up anywhere. Okay? It's what you have to decide. Because I don't care how you do it as long as you do it one way. All right? Is this a negative 4 or is this minus 4 times 1 times negative 5? It's either one that you choose. Okay? If we pretend that's a minus, I'm going to put a minus right there and I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to say 4 times 1 times negative 5, which is what? Negative 20. What happens right there? Change, change. Change, that's positive, right? Over 2. So I get x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 29 over 2. Well, what if I did it the other way? What if I said 9 plus negative 4 times 1 times negative 5? That's 20. It doesn't matter which way you do it. You're going to get the same thing. The thing is, which way are you going to do it? Are you going to write the negative sign down and ignore it? Or are you going to treat it like negative 4 and 1 and negative 5? Again, I don't care which way you do it, but you need to choose a way and do it every time so you don't get confused. Because something will happen and you'll write down a negative, but then you'll say negative 4 times 1 times negative 5 and suddenly you'll have ne um, 20 and it's 9 minus 20 and that's not what it means at all. Right? Correct? Okay. Um, and then I get here. When I simplify negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 29 over 2. God bless you. And we're done. Do you know the square root of 29? Do you know the, anything inside of 29 that you do know the square root of? No. So that's it. That's done. Okay.
Now, I also know perfectly well that if you have your calculator, you can put in 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 5 and, and hit enter and it'll tell you 29. But we are also smart enough to not rely on every single step for our calculator. Is that fair? We need to be able to do math like this with our brain. I'm not I'm not going to be the teacher that says you won't always have a calculator because that's just not true. You'll have your phone most of the time. There's a calculator on your phone. You may not have the inspires that we use, but you'll have a calculator. Probably. But what if that there's a little off chance that you don't happen to have your phone? Maybe you got grounded and your phone got taken away. Oh, that doesn't ever happen to y'all? Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. Okay. But you guys get the idea. That might happen to some people, right? So we'll just pretend maybe that's a possibility. And we need to be able to do this math in our head, okay? This is our solution. What does that mean? Okay, great. X equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 29 over 2. What does it mean? That's the solution to this quadratic. Okay, if I put this equation or this answer back into x, it would equal zero, right? How many solutions did I get? Two. Two. What's what's one of them? One of them is negative three plus the square root of twenty-nine over two. Correct. Any questions about that? Okay, then let's do another one. Another. 25 x squared minus 8x. Can I fix something? I just wrote it wrong. It's supposed to be a 20x plus 4 equals 0. Sorry about that. <laughs> 25 x squared. Minus 20x plus 4 equals 0. What do we do first? Okay, so A is here. B is here. C is here. Always? Is this always A? Is this always B? Is this always C? If it's in standard form, right? And we want to get it in standard form because then that makes it super easy, right? But if it's not in standard form, where is A always? With the x squared. That's right. Where is B always? With the x and C? The always the constant, okay? So A is 25, B is negative 20, and C is 4. X equals negative B. Does everybody see why it's just 20 and not negative 20? Because it's negative negative 20 plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over to a why did I put negative 20 in parentheses because it's, real. it's gonna be a positive number but if all I put in the calculator was negative 20 squared it's gonna tell me a negative number isn't it right it's gonna say negative 400 when I know that it's negative or positive 400, just reminding myself that if I'm going to use the calculator for that, I need to remember to put that in parentheses. Okay? That's not required, it's just a notation thing, right? 20 plus or minus the square root of 400 minus 4 times 25 times 4. So 400 minus 400? Ooh. All over 50? x equals 20 plus or minus the square root of 0 over 50. Does anybody know the square root of 0? You don't? Oh, it's 0. Okay, okay. So I get x equals 20 over 50. So x equals what? Two over five? Two fifths? Okay. Um, how many answers did I get? Well, I thought I was supposed to get two. Isn't it a quadratic? Oh, remember? That means that if I graph dot graphed it, 
if one is right here, then two fifths would be right here, and it's just barely touching the axis right at two fifths, right? Do you remember what that's called, by the way? It's called a double root. If I factored it, it would be x plus two fifths, x plus two fifths. It's a double root. It actually probably wouldn't be that. It would probably be 5x plus 2, but we'll talk about that later. Excuse me, 5x minus 2. But that's a double root. We still got two answers. It's just the same one. Any questions about that? Okay. So what about this one? Negative x squared plus 4x minus 13 equals 0. What to do first? So a is in front of x squared, b is in front of x, c is the constant. So a is negative 1, b is negative 4, c is negative 13. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Hmm, that's a lot of negatives over there, isn't it? x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus, that's 4 times 13, 52 over negative 2. So x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 36 over negative 2. Anybody know the square root of negative 36? 6i. x equals 4 plus or minus 6i over negative 2. Hmm. I do, I do need to simplify it. Do you notice that the top two numbers in this um, fraction are both divisible by a 2? So what if I factored out a 2? What would be left? 2 plus or minus 3i, right, over negative 2. What are you allowed to simplify when you're simplifying fractions? I'm allowed to simplify factors, right? Well, is 2 one factor and 2 plus or minus 3i another factor? Yes. So can I simplify this 2 and this 2? Yes. Can I simplify this 2 and this 2? No. Because it's 2 plus or minus something. There's something being added or subtracted. That's not a factor. This 2 is part of this factor right here. Okay. So I get x equals 2 plus or minus 3i over negative 1. Well, can't I just divide both of those terms by a negative? Well, what's 2 divided by negative 1? Negative 2. What is plus or minus 3i divided by negative 1? I'm still going to get plus or minus 3i, right? Because positive 3i divided by negative 1 is negative 3i, and then negative 3i divided by negative 1 is positive 3i, so I'm still going to get the same thing. So this is my solution right here, okay? So those are the three examples I'm going to show you, but I do want to show you a couple more answers, places that you might get in an answer that you don't know what to do, and I just want to make some recommendations, okay? Let's say you're doing all your work, you got all this work up here, and you get x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 over 2. Can you cross out all those twos? You can only 
simplify them if they are factors. If things are being added or subtracted, you can't simplify them, right? And you especially can't get inside of a radical. The only way you can get inside of a radical is if you take stuff outside of the radical. Do you know the square root of 2? Then this is the answer. You can't simplify it. The only thing you can do is say what 1 plus or minus the square root of 2 over 2, but that's just as messy as that is. Right? Because each of these terms is being divided by 2. Right? What happens if you get here? You do all your work and you get x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 25 over 3. That's not going to be a 3. Let's make it a 2. Are you done? Why, why are you not done? You know the square root of 25. What is the square root of 25? So you have 4 plus or minus 5 over 2. Guys, what's 4 plus 5? What's 9 divided by 2? 9 over 2. What's 4 minus 5? Negative 1 divided by 2? Do you see what I'm saying? Don't leave it at this point. Go one more step where you actually figure each of them out. 4 plus 5 and then 4 minus 5. Okay with those? So what if you're doing all of your work and you get x equals... 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 16 over 4. What do you do? Okay, you know the square root of negative 16. What is it? 4i over 4. What are you allowed to simplify? The 2 and the 4 and the 4. Right? I could, like I did earlier, I could took, take out a common factor like I did here, but sometimes it's just as easy to think about the fact that both of these terms are divisible by 2, so I'm allowed to divide them by 2, right? If all three of these things are divisible by the same thing, I can simplify it, can't I? They're all divisible by 2, so I divide out a 2. 1 plus or minus 2i over 2, and that's all I can do. Let me show you one more, okay? x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 11 over 8. What can I do? Take out the i. Because do I know the square root of negative 1? But do I know the square root of 11? No, so I just get 4 plus or minus i root 11 over 8. Can I do anything else to that? But these two are both divisible by 4. But they're not all three divisible by 4, right? So I just have to leave it. That's as far as I can go. Any questions?